Um, thank you so much, Paul. And um, good morning to everybody who's in the venue and those that are joining online. Um, as Prof mentioned, I will be taking you through the processes of submitting your proposal and um, for ethics applications as well. And I think um, it is a continuation of what Marilyn has talked about in terms of the committees. Um, but also it forms a basis of um, the following presentations after. I feel like um, some of the issues that I'm going to be highlighting will be um, talked more into details with different presenters um, coming um, in the next sessions. Um, can I please have the first slide? I start off with the proposal submission process, and um, I have got questions of when, what, and how. Um, so, um, typically um, within policy, a master's student, a full research master's student, has to submit their proposals within six months of um, registration and um, within a year for, for PhD registration. And I'm sure that the following speaker who will be um, taking us through the overview of the MND policy will also highlight um, that issue. So if you are a student and you are already registered with the department, um, the, your research proposal um, is first submitted to your department. So you will then need to know the relevant um, department um, research coordinator in your department so that um, you understand what your departmental um, processes are. And once it's approved by the department, it is submitted um, to FPGSC, which is the Faculty Postgraduate Studies Committee. And then depending on the risk level um, of your study, it will then um, either go to the Research Ethics Committee for Human, which is the University Ethics Committee, or it will be approved at um, FPGSC level. So what you need to submit is the proposal with all appendices. And this is the final proposal that was approved um, at your department. It will be followed by the departmental proposal evaluation form or the minutes of your committee. So um, what that shows us at um, FPGSC is that the department has approved that your proposal can um, go on to the next stage. Um, and it also um, determined that um, it followed the official review processes within your department. Um, the, the evaluation form has to be signed by your supervisor and the HOD um, to indicate that they are endorsing that um, that final proposal is submitted. And um, the complete risk assessment form and the wreckage form with all signatures. The current wreckage form that um, we are using already includes the risk assessment in it. That needs to be completed in full. All pages initialed by the supervisor and the student or the PI and the PRP as um, the language would say in the form. It will be um, signed by yourself as the researcher, by your supervisor and the HOD of the department. In a situation where the HOD of the department is your supervisor, they may not sign in capacity as HOD. They can sign as, an, as a supervisor and then they will use the department rep representative at FPGSC to sign in capacity of HOD or it will be endorsed by the director of school. Um, that the form will be um, after submission of that, um, adhering to the deadlines that um, we share in terms of the agenda deadlines, um, the proposal deadline is um, comes before the academic matters. So when we communicate our deadlines, just be aware that there will be two deadline dates for FPGSC. The first one will be for um, proposals because we need um, enough time for our reviewers to go through your proposal. And the second one will be for 
the academic matters will, which will be closer to the meeting date. So just be aware that there's two different deadlines for FPGSC, one for proposals and one for academic matters, and you need to adhere to the deadline date as we hardly compromise on, on, on that. So after the, the meeting um, and your proposal has been reviewed, um, we will communicate um, outcome to, to you, depending on how uh, many proposal has served in our, in our meetings. We normally take a week to get back to students um, to communicate feedback, and um, we request that you acknowledge that you have received um, that feedback. The feedback will also include the email address of the liaison person so that if you have any questions regarding the feedback that was provided to you, you are able to communicate to the FPGSC liaison person and then they will be available to meet with you. Um, it's recommended that you attend um, to feedback within three months of, of, of receiving it. And um, I'm happy that we currently uh, on the floor, we have the chairperson for Reg H. Um, who is also giving us a presentation later on. Maybe she'll also shed a light on the implications of um, what happens when you don't attend to, to feedback within three months when it comes to ethics application. But essentially, um, if, that is, uh, if that does not happen, um, normally your proposal will have to go through um, the reviews process again. So you're starting from scratch because you've taken um, a bit of long time to attend to, to feedback. Thank you. Next slide. So um, when it comes to ethics um, applications, um, the process differs in terms of the risk of your study. So the low risk, medium or high risk studies, when we look at low risk studies, and those that are provisionally accepted. So when we communicate um, feedback to you, we will indicate in the resolution whether the proposal was accepted or not. So for those that are provisionally accepted, it means that um, you attend to feedback and your revised documents needs to be sent to the liaison person who will be communicated to you via email to say who's your liaison person at FPGSC. And um, normally we encourage students to give um, the liaison person at least a week to look through the, the changes because then, um, you know, that gives them time um, to, to ensure that all feedback was attended to. Um, and once the liaison person, they're happy with your changes, only then do we move on to the next stage of um, the approval process. So it happens sometimes that you do your revisions and then the liaison person comes back and they have more comments. You still need to attend to that and then send it back. The important thing there is to make sure that you keep us in copy, you keep the faculty in copy. That way we are able to, um, to follow up with the liaison person if we see that maybe a week or two has passed and no feedback has been communicated either to us as the faculty or to the student and, and the researcher. So once the liaison person is happy and they've approved um, that all changes are satisfactory, um, because it's a low risk study, the faculty um, postgraduate studies committee will issue the, the ethics letter. Um, and with a condition, with the conditions of approval issued as well, that needs to be signed um, by your supervisor and then um, data collection may commence. It should be noted that you can only start, you can only start with data collection once your supervisor has submitted the signed copy of the ethics um, letter to us. And then for the medium to high risk studies, um, the same process um, applies in terms of the revised documents being sent to the liaison person. Um, the liaison person still has to approve um, that changes were made. And once that's done, um, we need um, a complete signed form. Um, we need you to attach your, your faculty feedback 
and um, the final proposal to us at faculty, and then we will initiate the submission process to Reg H. Um, you, what you need to be aware of that is that when you're completing the sub for submission to Reg H, you need to follow the the process as stipulated in the Reg H form. So if they say that you attach appendix a research proposal as appendix one, then you need to name it as as such. Um, once we've submitted um, to Reg H, then um, Reg H will provide feedback. Um, revision still needs to be done within that um, three months, and um, they will appoint a liaison person as well. And after their um, approval, the ethics letter will be issued to you, and the Reg H form um, will copy the faculty when they are issuing the, rec the letter. Um, still, with as with the um, low risk study, you may only commence with data collection if you've sent the signed um, ethics letter to the to the research office. Please, next slide, please. Um, however, there are situations where a proposal is called for a resubmission, or what we love to call in our faculty as a re-review, so that. Um, we don't scare people. Um, so when we the resubmission outcome is communicated, uh, feedback has to be attended to within three months as well. Uh, but in those situations, normally we would um, encourage for the supervisor and the student um, to meet with the liaison person first so that they can um, go through the revisions um, talk through the issues that came up with with that project and how they can work through um, change the changes. And um, the the revised documents will then be sent to the liaison person who will um, look and um, see if the proposal and the wreckage form may be resubmitted to FPGSC. So what resubmission means, it means that you will do the corrections and your proposal will have to go through the review process all over again. And if the blazon person has um, approved, then the documents will be resubmitted to serve at um, an FPGSC committee meeting and the whole process of the previous slides um, apply. Next slide, please. Um, when it comes to, 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 to ethics approval, um, there are situations where a student either needs to, to, to make a change or something to their proposal and their ethics application, or they needing to, to extend. Um, so for amendment, if you need to, um, to amend anything um, from the, the, the original approved protocol, then you need to, to complete um, the form 006 um, to be submitted to us at FPGC, and then we initiate the submission to the process. But there are two different um, processes with amendments where um, one may be considered as a major amendment, and you will be able to understand what a major amendment is if you go through the wreckage website. They've detailed what constitutes a major amendment or a minor amendment, where with major amendment, that's where you need to complete the form and you submit all documentation that um, wreckage requires, and then we submit it and it serves at their committee. And with um, a minor amendment, then they don't require um, a completed form, but they do state that you need to submit um, a letter on a letterhead explaining the, the minor change that needs to happen. And um, the original approved protocol needs to be submitted. The revised protocol as well that highlights where the change was made also needs to be submitted. All of that process is um, outlined in the Rakech website, and in my slide there, I have um, included the link to to their website. Um, you also need to, if you see that you will be needing um, extra time in terms of data collection, because um, approval is only given for a period of one year, 
so if you see that maybe you are on month eight and you're still going to need more time with data, then you need to at least submit um, the extension request four or six weeks before your ethics lapse. And um, there is a form that needs to be submitted. Um, normally, some people um, submit it straight to Reg H, but we will rather, uh, we prefer it if the submission first comes to, to FPGSC so that we can screen if everything is completed in full and if everything that is needed by Reg H is attached, and then we do the submission on, on your behalf to Reg H. And um, the process for, for, for the extension will be in the, in the next slide in terms of who needs to submit um, an extension request when I talk about um, progress reports. Thank you. Um, so the progress reports, we have two different progress reports that mostly students tend to, to confuse. And um, the first one is the faculty progress report. So for that one, all health sciences students, regardless of whether you've received an ethics approval or not, they need to complete it. Um, the call normally opens twice a year, one for first semester and then sec um, the second one for the, the last semester of the year. And it's completed online by both the student and the supervisor. And the exemption for the faculty progress report um, comes to those who are not registered for their treatise module yet. So I know, for example, with qualifications in, in pharmacy, such as the industrial pharmacy, the, their coursework, their students only register for the treatise module on their second year of registration. So they can only complete that progress report when they've registered for, for their treatise module. When it comes to the Reg H, which is the ethics progress report, um, only those with ethics approval need to complete um, that progress re report, regardless of whether approval was given by the faculty or whether it comes from um, the Reg H, or if it's a degree paper study or non-degree paper study. Every other study that was issued with an ethics letter, you need to complete the, the progress report. And um, the deadline is um, 15th of November each year that you need to, to submit unless if um, communicated otherwise from Eric H. But the deadline is normally the 15th of November each year. So for, for, for the progress report and extension, so with this slide I'll talk with both um, extension and, and the progress report. So if, for example, your data collection is still in progress or you haven't commenced, but you've received um, ethics approval between the, the period of October the previous year and September the current year. So let's say you've received um, fee, um, ethics approval in October 2021 up until currently and you're still collecting data, then you need to submit the progress rec the report and the extension um, application if by November you still haven't complicate, um, completed your, your data collection or if you see that um, you will be needing um, a bit of more time. Um, I've also included um, approval of January the current year because um, you need to at least submit um, your re extension request um, six months before and the last meeting of either FPGSC and um, Reg H is in November. So there's no meeting in December. So it's best that by the deadline of November, you've submitted the forms. Um, and then if you, you, um, you, your data collection is completed and there's possible engagement, um, with participants, you still need to submit um, the progress report and the extension application if you see that you are close to the period of lapsing the ethics approval. Um, if your data collection is completed and you don't need any further um, engagement with your participants, 
then um, you need to submit the progress report and the study closure form. So all of the forms that are in the slides are available on Reg H. Um, I, will, I do not like to share them right now um, with the students because sometimes Rekage updates the form and the students are left with an outdated form. So it's best that when you need to use any of the Rekage forms, you see what form is currently in use in with the Rekage. Um, and then if data collection is also completed and um, study needs to be uh, discontinued or closed, then um, you need to submit um, the forms as indicated. The implication of not submitting um, an extension application specifically is that um, if the study is not complete and no extension request um, was submitted, um, in order for you to continue with data collection, you will have to start from scratch. Um, in terms of requiring ethics approval. Your application will be treated as a new application and all the processes that um, I've stated in my previous slide applies, which means then that it takes you more time to go back to the field and you may not at whatever cost collect data if you don't have um, a valid ethics um, approval letter or if you are in the process of amending an application and it still hasn't, that amendment has, has not been approved, then you may not um, um, collect data during that um, period. Um, I think that is the end of my presentation and thank you so much.